And it's basically a controller for databases to make sure that they're operating fine. But uh, today I will talk about NDB cluster. And uh, NDB cluster is quite an old uh, technology actually. And uh, I was kind of, uh, I was listening to the booking kind of from the keynote talk about boring technology and using boring stuff. And this is probably the most boring piece of software, you know, there is. Because you don't hear anything about it, you, you know, it's, it's a little bit quiet about it. But it's, uh, I really much like it. Uh, because it's a very, very powerful database uh, when it's used in the correct uh, uh, situations and the correct environments. And chances are, you know, all of you are sitting here with mobile phones, you're placing calls every day. And I can guarantee you that every call you make goes through a MySQL cluster somewhere. So it's very much used as the, uh, in the heart of almost every telecom operator uh, on the planet. And what this is used for is mainly for an, uh, a function called HLR, which is a home location register, which is keeping track of all the mobile phones and uh, where you are. So if you are, you know, call, if I'm calling you, for example, and you don't pick up your phone, uh, then it checks out what kind of services do you have, do you have a voicemail, etc., etc. And it's also keeping track of uh, what uh, uh, radio base stations in the mobile network that you are uh, closest to, right? So it can route uh, uh, the call uh, towards you. And in those uh, environments, as you understand, it must be up and running all the time and it must be very fault tolerant and never break. Because if it breaks, uh, a number of million of uh, subscribers are affected, right? Uh, so, so, so MySQL cluster is used for uh, uh, for storing this subscriber information uh, on many tenants, and uh, then you know managing from you know in a small operator, you know, like some of thousand subscribers until up to the very giant uh, operators with 30, 50, 100 million uh, subscribers, and I've been working on some of those projects. Uh, back in the day, because I worked with MySQL and my MDB was part of MySQL, so I worked with some of the, uh, the operators of the uh, telecom manufacturers to, to build, help them build this uh, HLR system. But then it's also used in a lot of other places like online gaming, uh, uh, sports betting is another one. And in online gaming, for example, uh, it's uh, not very well known, but uh, Blizzard. Uh, runs uh, World of Warcraft, Starcraft, uh, out of uh, MySQL cluster. So it's uh, pretty uh, uh, used for many different things, but you don't really perhaps think it's uh, used. So anyway, anyone here uh, with any uh, knowledge of MySQL clusters? I, I don't recognize you from before. No, I'm um, with a customer uh, that <coughs> asks us to, to build a, a financial business to business uh, paying platform and they actually have the MDB in their repayment no. and I'm not sure if they are they have <coughs> that in the repayment because they know what the thing is doing mm. or just entered my square cluster in Google and found the first one and they hit we need this no. uh, that's I'm not sure about okay. I'm not, so I'm not sure about if, if this technique would be okay yeah. to use in a yeah. financial yeah. situation or not, yeah. or yeah. is advisable to use yeah. instead of Cordero. So. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, uh, and uh, I hope to be able that this talk um, uh, answers uh, some of your questions. Um, and if it doesn't, please uh, get back to me later. We're going to talk about some different things here about the architecture and a little bit how the, the cluster works, uh, what to think about uh, uh, when tuning it. Uh, and then eventually, it's not on the list here, but we will uh, do a little quick comparison uh, with Galera. And I also have in line some, some, some uh, things about uh, comparison to InnoDB, where I think it's applicable. So you can see what's, uh, yeah, understand how it differs to, to the other, you know, more uh, other mainstream technologies. So it was uh, developed by Ericsson as a PhD thesis in 1996. And then eventually it was acquired by MySQL and, it, and this NDB storage engine. 
and then it was given an SQL access layer um, and was uh, yeah, uh, SQL support basically towards the NDB cluster storage engine. Uh, prior to that, it was only possible to access data in this NDB cluster using a, a C API. And some of the core features is that MySQL cluster offers a high availability. It's a scalable product as well. You can, you know, uh, some recent benchmarks shows up to 200 million uh, queries per second, which is quite, you know, quite good. And I think one of the most important things here is to understand is that it's designed to handle many parallel and short requests. It's not used for, you know, it's, it's not great for when you have long running or OLAP type of requests, but when you have short OLTP requests and many of them, uh, then it, it's, it really shines. Um, it's high performant um, and especially uh, high performant uh, is for uh, uh, when, you have, when you're using primary key queries, you know, simple key value kind of uh, lookups. And it's also you know, a self-healing database, so you have the node recovery and, and, and the cluster, uh, you know, when, you, when a node fades, you can just restart it, when, when a cluster fades, you can re just restart it and restart the node part of the cluster and it will uh, try and figure out uh, how to start it. Uh, so the, the core uh, model of a MySQL cluster, if you look at it on uh, a quite high level, is that you have a set of data nodes. And the data nodes are the ones that are uh, storing data and managing the transactions and making sure that data is consistent and, and, and replicated in some particular way inside this cluster. Uh, on top of that, you can connect Java applications, MySQL, you know, uh, or C++ APIs to talk to this data node. So, so there is a connector, uh, a cluster J is called a Java connector, which talks well, natively without an SQL with the data nodes. But if you like to use SQL, you can use uh, the MySQL server to access the data. And if you would like to use C++, you can use that. And there is also, uh, you can also actually use Node.js uh, and connect from Node.js natively uh, to the data nodes. And on the other side here, to the right here, we have a couple of management servers. And the management servers, they really don't do much, um, except when there is a failure. But they are storing and managing the configuration uh, describing uh, this cluster. And it's, they don't do any processing or query routing or anything like this. The only thing when they are used is when, when, a, when a data node or an application node starts up, they will connect to the management server to get the rest of the configuration to the cluster so that uh, these nodes knows where to uh, connect. Um, to. Another thing, when there are actually you know, kind of critical components, um, and I'm sure you know in Galera, you, know, you can have um, well, network partitioning, right? So, uh, and, uh, and if you have network partitioning, well, that's not a good thing, right? So, in Galera, you should deploy odd number of nodes, basically, right? So, so if you have a network partitioning, you would like you want it to be designed so that you, have, you always have a majority, right? And it's the same thing here, really. Uh, the data nodes are operating in pairs, so here we will have always an even number of nodes, uh, but to give, give the odd um, odd one, so to say, we have the management server which is like the garb, garb D arbitrator in Galera. So if, if there is a split in the network, the data nodes will ask the management server if they are uh, okay to continue in this cluster, or, if, you know, or, should they, yeah, or should they become, like in Galera, should they stay synced, or should they go uh, offline? That's the uh, answer that they will get back. So it's kind of the same mechanism here that you have a consensus majority win uh, situation and and uh, we will uh, look a little bit deeper here uh, the data nodes operates in pairs as I said and each data node uh, stores basically one pair or each pair of data nodes stores actually um, 
a partition of data. Uh, so so in, in, in this set of data nodes, you have one, set, one partition, and on these two data nodes, you have another uh, partition. And inside here, you have uh, this data node has you know, partition zero, but this one would probably have one of them will be the primary for each of the partitions. So this would be the primary partition, and this would be the secondary uh, uh, partition. Is that important to know? Well, not really. Uh, but uh, it's you know the, when when you do uh, a query, the queries are always routed to the node having the primary partition of the data because that's where the, the locking protocols uh, originates from. So that you are always sure that you are you know, starting the locking protocol from the primary node. So it's not in a random way, because if you do it in a random way, you would get uh, dead box, right? So it's easy to control the locking protocol if it starts from um, the, the primary uh, partition. And then there is a, uh, what is important here is that when you do an insert here, uh, there is a two-phase uh, commit protocol that's being used. And the, 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 uh, the sequence goes as that the insert comes in from the MySQL server, it's translated into well, it's, uh, C++ protocol that the data nodes understand. It comes into what is a transaction coordinator on the uh, data node. The transaction coordinator then is then preparing this insert or update on, uh, uh, on the data nodes. And if the prepare was OK, it comes back to the transaction coordinator. OK, I prepared it OK. Then the transaction coordinator will send out commit messages um, uh, to these data nodes. And when it has done that, uh, there the, the, the would be an acknowledgement back to the, uh, to the application. Um, so um, the, the, the concurrency control here is, is um, based on pessimistic locking opposed, as opposed to Galera where you have an optimistic locking, right? Uh, where I would say that in, the, in this case, um, uh, you're less prone to deadlocks in, in high concurrency uh, uh, situations because of that. Of course, the fact is that you start the writes in one node group on the primary, you know, instead of you can, in Galera, you can start the writes on all nodes at the same time. Uh, it's an optimistic locking, so the write set, you do the commit and then the write sets will go out. You know, it might be okay. It might not be. So there are some small differences like that. Uh, and uh, then when you have loaded up here your cluster, when then you know this has one partition and this has another partition of data. And, 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 and each partition will basically, in this case we have two partitions, so uh, there will be 50% uh, uh, data here and 50% data here. And, uh, whether you should insert the data in this partition or in that partition, that's something that you don't have to think, uh, mess with. It's taken care of about the APIs. By default, when you insert something, the application will calculate the hash of the primary key. It will do some uh, module operations on it and then figure out if the data should go in this silo or in this silo here. Yeah. Um, uh, based on hash. What happens if you add a pair of nodes? Will that do regions to you? Yes, or? so yes, you can then do this. You can then grow this cluster. Um, so it's very easy to grow here on the application side. You can just add more application servers to scale out. On this side here, you can also add uh, nodes here. Um, and, and, and it's not as easy as in Galera, where you just tell, start up a node connected to the, uh, well, to a donor basically, and it starts to do an R-sync uh, or an, uh, an extra backup SSD uh, to sync up this node. Now, here, what you have to do is that you have to bring up these two extra nodes that you have, and then you have to run uh, an alter table, reorganize uh, partitions to repartition uh, each and every table uh, that you have. 